Hi everybody. A big part of working on your web pages, whether you're in HTML, CSS, or JavaScript, is referencing other things. You'll find yourself oftentimes pointing to a script document, displaying an image where you have a, a path to an image you need to reference, loading a CSS file, link to a different page. You're on foo.htm, you need to link to bar.htm. How exactly do you do that? Or in, within CSS itself, say in the background image property, and loading another page into an iframe, and so on. All of these are cases where we need to specify a file path to be able to point to some other file somewhere on our website or on another website that we need to reference so that we can build the page that we're trying to build. So in this video, we're gonna look at a variety of examples on how we can make sense of file paths on the web. So there's a generic name for all the stuff we reference, such as the images, code files, and so on. That very generic, boring name is known as resources. So you might often see documentation or articles on the web just talking about how to load a resource. And the way I'm going to explain all of this is by focusing on just a part of a resource that actually helps you point to something. And that is known as a file path. So here's an example where we have an image element with the source attribute. And what the source attribute often points to is typically another image. And in this case, we have a file path that specifies where exactly that image lives. Now you might already know what this file path references, but I'm gonna keep it simple right now and not mention it because we're gonna look at this and other examples in a few moments. And so the best way to explain all of this is by and kind of looking at this hypothetical file and folder structure. Here we have what's basically a website root. We have a couple of images. You know, we have an images folder where there are three images in it. We have a scripts folder, the script file in it, a styles folder. And then at the root also we have the index.html file and icon.png. And we're gonna to try to make sense of file paths by looking at various combinations of how to reference a file from some part of this website structure to another part. So let's start with the first one. Let's start with the simple one, the most common case, when we're referencing a file in the same directory. This is the case, for example, where I'm in index.html and I want to reference icon.png via an image element. And notice the way we do that is by just directly referencing the file. There's no combination of special characters we need in front of it. The image source is set to icon.png and that's because icon.png is in the same folder as index.html where this particular HTML tag, the image tag, happens to live. So this is referencing a file in the same directory. Now, oftentimes though, we'll have styles or files that we wanna reference that are in a parent directory. So here's a case where I'm in index.html and the file I want to reference is theme.css. And the way we get to theme.css is by going to the styles folder, which then has the file we're looking for. And the way we reference a file like that is by first specifying the folder name and then slash and then the file itself. So in this case, from going from index.html to theme.css, the href attribute on our link element specifies styles slash theme.css, which is a one way of referencing a file in a parent directory. Now, the opposite of that is where we reference a file in the child directory. This is the case where I'm in default.css and I have a style rule where I want to reference that icon.png, which is in our website root. And the way we do that is by using the dot dot slash syntax. Notice the URL specified for the background image property in the my style rule example right here. It's URL and the path itself is dot dot slash. What dot dot slash specifies is to go up one folder and then start looking for files that are currently specified there. And this means that if I have multiple folders that I'm nested into that I want to get out of to reference another file, I would use a series of dot dot slash. So it'd be dot dot slash, dot dot slash, then the file that I'm looking for with the number of dot dot slashes depending on how deep I'm trying to escape to access a file. So referencing a file in a child directory is made up, made possible by the dot dot slash character. Now, in many times, it'll be a combination of the two approaches we've already seen so far. There'll be a case where, in this case, I'm in default.css and I want to access dancingbanana.gif. And the way I would get there really is default.css is in my styles folder, which is, of course, in the website root. I need to go away from there, then go to the images folder, which is where dancingbanana.gif happens to live. And so here you can see the combination of approaches where I first specify the URL for background image with the dot dot slash, which takes me to my root folder. 
Then I type in the path for images, which is a folder containing the image I want. Then the file itself, which is dancingbanana.gif. So this combination kind of makes me go from one part of my page on a folder somewhere to another part of a file in a folder somewhere else. So this is a combination of things. So all of these approaches we've seen so far tend to, there's a name for them. They're relative path. And so what it means is that the way we go from one location to another is relative to the file we're currently dealing with. So there's a lot of context that we need to keep in mind in terms of how to go from referencing one part of a file in a folder structure to another file in another part of a folder structure. There's another approach, and that's to specify a path that always starts from the root of our site. And this way, it doesn't care where the file path will live, it doesn't care where our starting point is or destination is, the path always starts from the root. And it sounds a little bit complicated or even just out there, but as we will see in a few moments, in many cases, it's actually more convenient. And I think personally, it's pretty easy to use compared to the more you know, compl his complicated way of using the dot dot slash syntax. So, and this is what's known as the absolute path approach. This is the approach where in this case, same scenario as before, I'm in default.css and I want to access dancing banana, but instead of specifying the series of dot dot slashes, making sure I'm using enough of them to get back to my root and then navigating back up to the, the folder that I want, the absolute pathway always starts with just a slash. So notice that it's slash images slash dancing banana.gif. So by specifying the slash character, what, uh, what we're telling the browser is always start at the root. And this is great because it doesn't matter how deeply nested my CSS file the style rule lives in, as long as I start off by specifying slash, I'm always starting at the root of the site that I'm currently working with. So the other approach is the fully qualified absolute path approach. And this is an approach where instead of specifying the path by just having a slash, we actually specify the full URL with the domain name itself specified. So notice that our background image includes https colon slash slash www.group.com, which is the, the full domain name. And then it specifies the path as if the, the root was always going to be there. Now, why would I use a fully qualified path as opposed to just the regular absolute path that we saw a moment ago? It really depends on how portable you want your code to be. If I were to give this snippet to you and you have a different website or a different domain, there, there's almost no ambiguity that this URL will resolve appropriately because it's always going to go to this domain. But if you had this approach right here, you have to ensure that on your own web server, wherever you're hosting this content, that this file path, dancingbanana.gif, happens to exist as well. So it's really portability is one of the big reasons for when you would use a, just a regular absolute path versus a fully qualified absolute path. So there you have it, a whirlwind tour of all the various approaches we have for accessing file paths on the web and how we would go from referencing a file in some part of our website to another part of our website, or in some cases as the absolute path right approaches, the fully qualified absolute path approach highlights. You can even reference files on a completely different website if you so need to. And with that, if you have any questions, post in the forums at formatgroup.com where I and others will be very happy to help you out. I prefer it over you posting on the comments here because I don't check the comments quite frequently and the formatting options for replying to you are not really great here. And if you like this video, tell your friends and enemies all about it. Hit subscribe to be notified of more videos that I'll be posting periodically. Follow me at Krupa on Twitter to be notified of other interesting bite-sized updates on web development topics or pictures of my cat Pixel, whatever happens to be you know, floating around in my brain at the time in 240 character chunks, I'll be sharing it. And if you like reading content, not just on a website, but in a physical paperback edition or a Kindle edition, buy one of my books. I tend to write a lot of books quite frequently. Some are, I'd say, quite good, according to all the reviews and sales that many of you have thankfully been very kind to purchase and give feedback on. So check them out, it's a link below in the video. And with that, I will see you all next time.